Welcome back. This video will give you a brief introduction what the binary space partition in Doom 3 actually is. It will also cover how to place a visibility portal in your map, which is essential for a good performance. Actually, I wanted to put everything in one video, but it was too big, so I split this into two parts. The first part is a theoretical introduction, and the second video will be about the practical use of the BSP tree. Usually, BSP trees are viewed as an outdated concept and most game engines use some kind of octree technique to subdivide and manage the entire 3D space. And then you have to add all kinds of special volumes like trigger volumes or post-processing volumes to tell objects so they can behave within a certain area. The BSP tree helps to automate this process and that is why I want to show you how this works. Before I can show you in Blender how a binary space partition works, I have to add at least one area portal into the map of episode 1, so the map compiler actually saves the BSP tree information that we want to inspect. So, creating area portal, so this portal is very straightforward. We select a node draw material, so this is of the group Textures Common, no draw. And we extrude the brush until the ceiling. Then we select the front face with just uh, shift and uh, left mouse click. And then we go to um, the textures collection or material collection textures editor and assign this portal material. So that's it. We have one with portal side here, and the rest is just the node draw material. Okay, save, and let's compile it in the engine. We compile it again with the DMAP map compiler. Tutorials, episode 3, map. And this time we add two additional compiling parameters. The first one is minus glView, and the second one is minus ASCII tree. Okay, that works. And let's dive into Blender. Uh, I just want to give you a quick overview of the files we are working with when compiling a map. So the source map is episode3.map. And then when we issue the DMAP compiler, the BSP is saved in the episode3.proc file. And then it's also the collision engine is loaded, so we have a CM file for collision map. And if we have any monsters in the map, then there's also the Airway Awareness Compiler called in the background at the end. So that will create a navigation file for all monsters or enemies in the map. Now we just added the uh, compiling parameter minus glView and that will create three additional files here. And those files we want to inspect in Blender. Oh well. Recording these types of videos after dinner is always, uh, it always sucks, but here we go. Um, <laughs> I already imported the um, episode 3 proc file into the text uh, editor um, uh, blender, and next thing is wavefront. So we're looking for the pruned, because BSP pruned is, it is already split by the BSP algorithm, and however, um, we are dealing with Quake or Doom coordinates, and if we want to import this into the into Blender, uh, we have to change the transform orientation here. So this is not optimal. Usually it should be X forward, but it's Y forward, and then it's uh, Z up for the upward direction. And we also want to split everything by groups instead of objects. So now it gets a bit more complicated. As the word binary implies, 
Binary Space Partition, or in short BSP tree, is a two-dimensional representation where each node contains a split plane, which cuts the 3D space into two pieces. And that way the BSP tree creates volumes, which are the leaves of this tree. And you can say for any point in the 3D space, where it ends up in this tree, or whether it is outside of all volumes, or the entire world. Okay. So we have here the prop format. Uh, i just uh, give you um, a bit overview of the prop format, what it is. So that is the BSP file, similar to Quake, Quake 2, Quake 3, Half-Life, um, just as a text file instead of um, a binary file. And we have inter-area portals. So that is just a portal we did in Trench Boom. And then we have nodes. And nodes is the actually the actual BSP tree. And um, this is a two-dimensional representation. That is why I compiled the map with the minus ASCII tree parameter. So we can actually see this. And uh, I added this to the compiler just for this video. Um, and that way we can see how it works. So I go back and we have the split plane. We have on the left side the, the nodes, the BSP tree hierarchy. And as you can see, the first node is a root node. And that node um, starts at the center of the world. So the format is the first three digits is a normal the orientation of the plane and um, the fourth digit um, or number is the distance of the plane to the origin of the world. Yeah, So that defines a plane. You can also define mathematically a plane, a plane using 3, 3D points, but this is just a has a normal form, um, pretty standard. And then you have these um, planes, split planes, that divide the space into two pieces for every decision node in the BSP tree. Okay. And each node can have two children. In this case, the root node. Let's go here. Zero has two children, one and zero. So one is the left child, which is, uh, so we go back here. So we have here one and the right child is zero. And zero means in this case, it has no child. It's touching the void. So, and in this case, um, for illustration purposes, uh, I marked all those um, X's as 666 because hey, it's, it's doom, yeah. So we're touching, we're facing hell <laughs> outside of the map, yeah. And if you look at the second split plane, so second node, then go back to the left side. This is the second one. It has decision point, uh, uh, ch children, two, and uh, 17. And this is also what's here on the left side, an upper left corner, and so on. And we have a split plane two and three, and so on. And we can see the children of, uh, for example, 19 here, so 20, 29. Yeah, that also works. So, and this is a bit different compared to Quake 3 or Quake 1. Um, Doom 3 only does the BSP compiling phase and that's it. There's no potential visible set um, computing phase afterwards. So um, originally um, with Quake and Doom, uh, with, with, with Quake or Quake 3, you have, for example, this kind of BSP leaf. And then 
there is a visibility matrix which says if any other leaf within the BSP tree is visible to it or not. And this is something Doom just doesn't, or Doom 3 just skips entirely. So instead we have these area portals like this. And this defines um, a split in, in the BSP tree. So all BSP leaves are associated with a certain area. So if we see this, we have area uh, zero here. So those are all leaves that are associated with area zero. And then we have all leaves associated with area one. So this is the room where we start. This is a uh, this is the uh, room that is that is left, and we can see that way how the BSP actually works. Then we also have void leaves. So those are the leaves in the BSP tree that are touching the void. Everything that is outside touching touching uh, the, the outside um, or, or makes a portal between the inside of the world and the outside, um, we can actually discard the entire geometries that are associated within those BSP leaves. So we don't need any geometry in the end, um, or we don't want to render anything inside of those leaves. So, and we have those leaf opaques. Those can be inside, I think. Um, doesn't really matter. We can all select these and, and hide those. We can select all split planes and hide them, all portals. And this is something that is a result that goes into the renderer in the end of the BSP compiling phase. So this will be triangulated and um, also merged and, and, and optimized a bit, but that's it. That's, that is what's left. Okay. And this also reminds me of something that I wanted to mention. Um, some people with a Quake 3 background, mapping background, and tend to cork the maps like in Quake 3. So, and if you look at the original maps in Doom 3, so this is a just example map I did, but if you look at the original maps of the Doom 3 main campaign, uh, you can also see that those um, surfaces or brushes that are touching the outside are just regu regular um, materials and they're not uh, assigned with the cork texture. So this is something um, most Quake 3 mappers do all the way. They try to seal the entire map or they start blocking out with, with, with the cork textures, uh, cork material, and only the inside is textured properly. And if you compare this technique, uh, or, or they usually do this, because they are afraid that the outside polygons or, or, or materials will create polygons in the engine in, in the end that will be rendered. So they think that this, this is the way to optimize your map. But this is, isn't true with, with Doom. And this is also what you can see here in the, in the result, in the compiler result in, in the end. Everything that was touching the void was outside is stripped away entirely. And I can go even further and um, show the output that goes into the renderer. So if you import if you import the episode three OBJ and we move it next to it. Then we can also see, and then it's confirmed, 
This is a triangulated version of this entire thing. Uh, it's not super pretty. It's even more cut because of the different uh, uh, um, materials. But you but you can see all outside geometry is stripped away. Yeah. Okay. So just a final note about the um, BSP tree structure. Um, unlike Quake 3, each decision point only points to another decision point or to an area. And that's it. So in Quake 3, it was possible that um, it leads to a BSP leaf, which actually contains data. And this is not the case anymore in Doom 3. So um, if you want, if you have any point uh, here, any arbitrary point in 3D space, it's either uh, in area 0 or it's in area 1 or the result will be minus 1, so it means outside of the world. Touching the void, just outside the world, that's it. So. This is really um, a slim version compared to what Quake and Quake 3 had. Okay, this wraps up this video. In part 2 I will explain how area portals support the camera culling in order to optimize the performance and how entities like doors can use the BSP tree to open and close area portals. So see you in the next video.